Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. Guys, in this video, we will be discussing at the rate component annotation in Spring Boot. Through this video, we have started our Spring Boot annotation series in which we will be discussing various annotations from basic to advanced level. So if you are a beginner in Spring Boot or you are preparing for the interviews, then this playlist will be very much helpful for you. So make sure that you are present on this channel and you are following this series. Okay, so for your uh, benefit only, we have made a dedicated playlist on this particular annotation all the videos or of the spring boot annotations you will find under this playlist the links of the link of this playlist i will give in the description box as well as the i button okay so make sure that you are present on this channel for that you will have to hit that subscribe button okay the flow of the video will be like this first of all we will be discussing the theory part of that uh, annotation then we will discuss the code part of this annotation okay so this is how the flow will go so guys now let's start this video and before starting the video please hit that like button as well as the subscribe button for this channel Okay, so guys, in this video, we will be discussing about the component annotation. So we will be discussing the theoretical part as well as the coding part of this component annotation in our Spring Boot application. Okay, so what is component annotation? This annotation is used on those Java classes which we want our Spring container to handle. That is, create and manage object of those classes at runtime. So we know that Java is an object-oriented programming and all the things happen in Java because of the object. So any class we have to use, we first have to make the object and then we can use that class. So this is where this annotation is helpful. That is for any class that we want to use, we will just annotate it with the component annotation and a spring container at runtime. When we will require that object of that class, our spring container will give us. We will not have to form our object, object on our own for that class. Now using this annotation, spring container will give us the object of that class at runtime. So I hope this thing is clear to you. Now let's just quickly move towards the editor so that I can show you the difference between the earlier approaches and what are what have been changed after we are using start using this component annotation. Okay, so this is our Spring Boot application. So let's just start first by just making a class. Let's just make a new package and inside that package we'll be making a new class. Let's just give our package name as uh, let's just say component only. Okay. And then inside this component package, we will make a new class. Let's just say a student class only. Okay. The student class will have one field. Let's suppose as of now, it is private string name of the student. This is one field. Let's just make one function inside the student class. Let's just say public string function name. Let's just give us hello. It is a return, a return type string. Okay. But it will return. It will simply return. Uh, let's just suppose code bashers. Okay. So this is a Java class that we have made inside our Spring Boot application. Now, traditionally, like uh, if we want this object of the student class, how we will how we will make it. So let's just move towards our main method. And inside this main method, if you have to uh, use that student object, how we will do it. So let's just it is a simple, simple way. We will be using a new keyword. This is a traditional approach that we were using. OK. Now, if you have to call that method using the student object, we will call that method that is hello only. And if we will have to do system dot print, uh, let's just simply do system dot out dot print ln. And if you will run the application, it what it will show, it will show the code bashers that have been printed on the console because this hello method is returning code bashers. So this is a traditional way that is using new keyword. We are making the object. But now let's suppose there are hundreds of java classes inside an enterprise level uh, application so everywhere when we have to use those classes we will be doing using this particular line to make the object okay and if there is a particular change in the class definition only so everywhere wherever we are making the object using this new keyword we have to go manually and like we have to go there and manually we have to correct that thing so this is not possible when we are talking about an enterprise uh, application because it has hundreds of Java classes and hundreds and thousands of objects have been used. So it is not possible that everywhere we will find out that where the object is formed and there there we will go and make changes if any changes occur. So for that purpose that is we do not have to declare now we have, do not have to make objects using this way. So for to uh, to destroy this way the other approach that we have used is, the, is to use component annotation. Now let's just see what's the benefit of component annotation. Okay, so this is a student uh, class. We have to now make, we have to now use the object of this student class. What we'll do, we'll simply annotate this 
class with the component annotation now using this component annotation now our spring knows that at runtime whenever we will be requiring the object of the student class spring will have to provide us not us we will not be going explicitly to form the object now using this annotation spring knows that yes whenever we will be requiring the object of student class spring has to provide that object to us okay now how we can use this object how we have to like how spring will know that whenever we when we will re be requiring so let's just see now so see in spring boot there is a term called application context what is application context now application context is nothing but it is a container of all the uh, sp uh, spring managed objects or you can say bean so again what is application context application context is a container of all the spring managed beans or object so student is also a spring managed bean only bean or object you can say since we have given the added component annotation so now the student has become the spring managed bean okay and we know that in application context all the spring managed beans are present okay so how we will call this object now how we will form the object now what we'll do see this is in the main method you uh, this is the spring boot starter code that is written so what this spring boot application run will return it will return an object of application context okay it will return an object of application context okay now as i told you application context is a container of all the spring managed bean so it means that the students bean or students object are also present inside this application context only how we will get that object again how we will get that object we will simply do application context dot get bean method we will use this bean method to get the object of student class okay inside this get bean method what we will pass the class name the class name for which we want the object so student dot class so we have passed inside this application context since it's a container of all the beans inside this get bean method we will be calling and inside the get bean we will be passing the class name for which we want the object now okay and what it will return it will return the object of that class on the left side what we will do simply we will declare it the student like this now now we will what we will do we will print the hello method inside that student class so system dot out dot println student dot hello so let's just print it because now we have get the object of student from the application context and now application context has decided which object to give us we have passed this particular class name inside the get bean method let's just simply run it now let me just tell you that what are the benefits of this approach now see first of all using the uh, using spring our application becomes loosely coupled that is if any change occurs at one place we do not have to go everywhere wherever that object is there to make the desired changes okay first thing is that second thing is that now all the java classes for which we make objects if they are like spring managed so all those will be present inside this application context only we will just have to give the class name and it application context will give us the object of that class and we will be simply using it so using this particular thing our application has become loosely coupled and when we were using the new keyword our application was becoming tightly coupled that is even if a small change co comes when we are using new keyword we'll have to find uh, go and change in hundreds of classes whereas if any small change comes here in this case we just have to go and make a change in that student class and application context will give us the updated object using this particular bean method so i hope this annotation is clear to you what it has done it has make this java class a spring managed bean so whenever you will be requiring the object of this class application context that is the spring container will be giving us the object of this class we don't have to go and explicitly make the object of this class so i hope all this thing is clear to you it's a very important as well as a very basic annotation in spring boot it's it's very important you understand this annotation going forward in this series so i hope all these things are clear to you theoretical part as well as the code part of this uh, annotation so if you found this video informative kindly hit that like and subscribe button and do follow the playlist along with it lot of more annotation videos i will be discussing in this particular series so thank you for watching this video